The diagnosis of epilepsy begins with history and physical examination. A detailed history is collected from the patient regarding the seizure frequency, duration, precipitating factors, presence of aura, presence of postictal state. History is also collected regarding the pregnancy events and childbirth, like difficult labor, trauma, and birth asphyxia. Neurological and physical examination are performed, which includes assessing the behavioral, motor abilities, mental status examination, sensory examination, and reflexes. A series of lab tests are performed, which include serum prolactin. These are assessed in patients with GTC, or complex partial seizures. The prolactin levels are transiently elevated in this group. Complete blood count, urinalysis, and special blood chemistries are performed to rule out other treatable causes, like hypoglycemia, altered serum electrolyte concentrations, infections, and so on. Comprehensive testing using EEG, MRI, and other radiological diagnosis can help in estimating the abnormality in the brain. EEG, or electroencephalogram, is used to identify the particular type of seizure, but epileptiform activity is found only in 50% of the patients. CT and MRI used in identifying the structural abnormalities of the brain, like brain tumors. CT is particularly helpful in assessing the brain tumor or cerebral bleeding, only in the initial phases of the disease. SPECT scan, also known as single photon emission computed tomography, is a brain scan that is used to locate the seizure foci in the brain. Let us now discuss the treatment strategies to control or prevent the seizures. Firstly, let us talk about the goals of treatment. The primary goals of treatment are to control the frequency and severity of seizures, to minimize the side effects and ensure compliance, allowing the patient to live as normal a life as possible. The family physician should monitor the drug adherence of the patient so as to achieve the complete suppression of seizures against tolerability of side effects. The treatment includes the non-pharmacological management, which is the frontline management of an individual with seizures. This treatment strategy includes the guidelines like immediately after a seizure attack or during the attack, the patient or the patient's family should remain calm and note the duration of the seizure. The patient should be laid down to his left side. The objects in his surroundings must be cleared from his jerking extremities. The clothing around the neck must be loosened or removed. Now let us discuss the actual treatment that is the pharmacological therapy of epilepsy. The pharmacological therapy involves drug selection based on the type of epilepsy, adverse effects, and patient preferences. The first line drugs in the treatment include phenetoin. It blocks sodium channels and prevent excessive firing of neurons, thereby stabilizing the neuronal membrane and inhibits the spread of seizures. It is given at a dose of 20 mg per kg body weight. Let us discuss the other first-line drug that is carbamazepine. It is another commonly used anti-epileptic drug. The mechanism is same as that of phenetoin. It is given in a dose range of 200 to 400 milligram. Ethosexamide is also a potential anti-epileptic drug. This anti-epileptic drug acts by raising the seizure threshold by reducing the calcium threshold currents in thalamic neurons. It is given in a dose range of 500 milligram. Valproic acid, or sodium valproate, is another effective anti-epileptic drug. It has got all the features of carbamazepines as well as phenetoin. It is used in treating the absent, partial, or generalized seizures. It acts by increasing the GABA synthesis, blocking the sodium channels, and also reducing the calcium threshold. It is given in a dose range of 10 to 15 mg per kg body weight. As we have discussed the first-line therapy, let us now discuss the second-line drugs used in case of epilepsy. Diazepam and lorazepam are used to treat status epilepticus and febrile seizures. Clonazepam, vigabatrin, lamotrigine are other second-line drugs used in treating the epilepsy. Treatment should always begin with monotherapy, that is, limiting the patient to only one drug in order to reduce the potential effects of the drugs. More than 60% patients are non-compliant to drugs due to increased side effects, and hence, the hospitalizations are also increased. Now, let us discuss the family physician intervention during the follow-up in patients with epilepsy. The family physician should closely monitor the patient with epilepsy in order to reduce the morbidity and mortality. The family physician should ensure that the patient is medication compliant and controlling the seizure threshold. 
The family physician should be well versed with the updated anti-epileptic drugs. Drug therapy is not indicated in patients with only one episode of seizures or in those with minimal symptoms. Anti-epileptic drugs can be withdrawn in those patients with successful seizure-free period of two to four years. According to the American Academy of Neurology guidelines, anti-epileptic drugs can be withdrawn in patients with seizure-free period of two to five years, provided there is a single type of partial seizure or primary generalized tonic-clonic seizures, and if the neurologic examination and IQ are normal, and if the EEG normalized with treatment. The anti-epileptic drugs can be discontinued by gradually reducing the doses. Special considerations are given to the female patients as estrogen has severe activating effect and progesterone has seizure protective effect. Females taking oral contraceptives should be closely monitored as this may lead to treatment failure. The patients are advised to remove the stigma and keep a check on the factors that triggers the seizures. As we have reached the end of session, let us revise the important points discussed in this session. Epilepsy is a group of syndromes characterized by recurring seizures. Based on the area and frequency of the seizure activity, it is categorized as partial seizures or generalized seizures. It mainly occurs as a result of imbalances of the neurotransmitter pathways and ion channels. Females are most affected when compared to males, as estrogen is a seizure stimulating factor. The first aid or initial management of epilepsy is important, as it prevents further complications. Generally, the treatment is started with monotherapy by first-line drugs. Sudden discontinuation of anti-epileptic drugs may result in potential hazards. Anti-epileptic drugs should be withdrawn gradually by tapering doses. Pregnant women with increased risk should be monitored carefully.